When you run the software for the first time, you'll get an error message letting you know the software cannot find some default files. Simply click on OK and you will get in. I'll click on Options, then Preferences to set some defaults. They include the units you're working in, inch or millimeter, and also the units for the flat DXF and IGES files that you can load. The next checkbox tells the software whether or not you want individual patterns to be grouped into single patterns like grids, pattern lines, bolt hole circles, and the like. If it's checked, you'll get those kind of patterns on imported parts. If it's not checked, then the imported parts will be made up of individual patterns and the machine code would tend to be longer for the sheets that you create with those parts. You can set the number of digits to display before and after the decimal point in all the fields that display numbers and when you take dimensions. Values are the X, Y, and radius values. 4.3 displays four numbers to the left and three numbers to the right of the decimal point. This has nothing to do with accuracy. It's simply a display setting. And the angles have their own display setting. Next are the cursor control settings. When you move the cursor with the mouse, it moves in the increments you have set as grid spacing. And the cursor step is the distance the cursor moves when you press the arrow keys on the keyboard. The sheet size defaults set the size of the sheet you'll see when you first start the software and when you click on New Sheet. Of course, you can always type in a different sheet size later on. The thickness setting is used to determine the smallest tool selected automatically and the default nibbling pitch when nibbling with round tools. And the menu type used on all the rest of these video clips is high resolution. So if you're not currently set to high resolution, you may want to change it so your screen display matches the display on these video clips. To set the default machine, click on the button across from the machine file field. You'll see the open window listing all the machines you have installed. If you don't see any machines, you may not have installed them yet. The machine files are not on the product installation CD. They are on a separate disk. To pick the default machine, simply click on the machine name, then click on open. And the other default files work the same way. Simply click on the button and then select the file. You can only set one file for each of these defaults. To use other files you may have, simply use the file menu and open to load in the one you want to use. Clicking on the print settings button allows you to select the preferred settings when creating a hard copy and you can select the font to use when dimensioning and printing. You would click on the color tab to set the color preferences and the tool assignment tab to set the auto tool select parameters. You could select a different setup directory or simply click on OK to save these settings to the current folder. The software I'm using includes both punching and cutting so you'll see the menus for both punch sequence and cut sequence. If you purchased just punching or just cutting you would only see one of these sequence menus. If you have a punching machine or combination machine, the next thing to do is set up the tool inventory. Click on Modules, then Tool Inventory. Click on the Add button, select the shape to add, and fill in the numbers. And click on OK or press Enter. When you're done, click on Save As and type in a name. Then click on Save, then Close. And yes to load the current inventory and exit tool inventory. Next, you'll have to set up material files for the machine. First, click on File, then Open. Make sure the file type is Machine. Click on the machine name, then Open. If there are no material files associated with the machine, you'll be asked to create one. Click on OK. The settings in this window are driver dependent, and the machine you load has a machine driver assigned to it. So you'll see the settings for your machine. All you do is fill in the information, click on OK, then click on Save, and type in a name for the material file. Then click on Save, and Close. Now the next time you load the machine, you'll see a list of material files. Simply click on the one you want to use, then click on Load, and Close. If you want to make another material file, or load in a different one, click on the Machine menu, and from here you can edit, save, or open different material files. And once you have your material files and tool inventory set up, 
Remember to click on Options, then Preferences to set the defaults. The other default settings in Options are first, Display. These settings tell the software what to display when you first run it, and also what shows up after a redraw. And these take effect immediately. You do not have to restart the software after changing them. For example, if you want to see clamped dead zones when viewing the sheet, then Show Dead Zones should be checked. To see the punching or cutting sequence after the screen redraws, then Show Sequence should be checked. And to see the machine code after generating the NC file, then View NC Program should be checked. Once you have all these set, click on OK. I'll click on Options again, then Punching. This has some settings that again tell the software how to start. For most of these, you would have to restart the software after setting them. If there is a check in the box next to one of these, then that command would be active when you start the software. If you change the setting here, it would have no effect on the current setting in the menu where these commands show up. These simply tell a software how to start. To change these settings on a sheet-by-sheet -sheet basis, you would click on the command from the various menus they show up in. You can set the default tab sizes, and also select the default punching order for auto-sequencing. Then click on OK when you're done setting these, and OK again to close the window. Cutting is similar to the punching window, in that if there's a check in the box, the software would start with that command active. You can also set the default sizes for the tabs, tolerance, and also select the size of the arrows displayed when you view the sequence or the cutting direction. And click on OK when you're done. Now you have to save these settings. Click on Options, then Save Options. The next time you start the software, it'll load in with all the defaults you have selected.